Let's all thank the wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. I can't show everything from the visual novel, so if you support me in Patreon, you will be able to watch everything from the old to the naughty. <laughs> also, don't forget to ring that bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified with future videos. Now, let's start the show! After leaving behind his former life in 1920s New Orleans, a jaded possum named Gray finds himself thrown into an unending nightmare by, by the enigmatic bartender, Virgil. Lost in a churning sea of souls, Gray comes across a group of men, somehow connected to his former home, a plantation replete with its own dark history. Just as quickly as they find each other, they're suddenly taken away, leaving Gray only one option. Dive into their memories and find out what caused this in the first place. Explore various locations throughout time such as 1960s New York, 1980s Los Angeles, etc. And strengthen your bonds with friends new and old. Many choices will lie before you and the results will have high stakes. Virgil's game is a gamble and you're, you're his bet. Will you play into his hand, try to return to your old life or forge a new future? The game is currently in... Okay. <laughs> it has M... M and M, which is perfect. Hello, everybody. My name's Yuki Cook, and welcome to Boros. Now, this is a new game that has been released recently. This is another dark, dark, dark visual novel. So, if you're into dark visual novels like Echo, so you're gonna enjoy this. So, let's -a go. I hope you all enjoy this because we're gonna do. Boros now. So ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's -a play Boros. The wet mud squelches under my paws as I make my way through the unpaved streets of the Ninth Ward. I hold my shoes in my free hand, careful to keep them clean. I take care not to step on any of the broken bottles, littering the street courtesy of the locals. I guess I'd be considered a local now by most. I mean... I'm new in town, <laughs> although I never really fit the bill. Another reason this needs to be done tonight. <gasps> so that's what they meant by rapid effects. That. <laughs> it starts raining. Hard. Adults quickly duck. Hard. Inside while children scream and play in the newly formed puddles. Hard. A brave fruit. Few shrug off the abrupt storm and continue drinking under the safety of their porch overhangs. Uh, waving their bottles at me as if to make a toast. I mimic the motion in return, noticing the shoes in my hand are now completely soaked. I just Oh! Is that you? Holy- Wait lang. Visual gag! I chuckled to my- Ooh, I look good! <laughs> I chuckled to myself. When God decides to take a piss where you're standing, there's not much to be done about it. Something my grandmother used to say. But in that raspy Irish brogue that added warmth to even the oddest idioms. The sections of New Orleans without paved roads seem perpetually waterlogged, leaving a distinct sulfurous odor on anything on or anyone that walked through them. It was actually pretty dangerous to walk on them right in right after a rainstorm. Tiny air pockets can create sinkholes that'll catch you off guard if you step too hard on them. A little girl runs by in a mud stra stained dress, laughing playfully as her mother closes in with a towel stretched out like a fish net like Sweetie, come back! You yeah, please don't be wet! That Please! I'm reminded of all the times me and, and the old gang would sneak into the city to play with our secret friends here. Not caring if our new clothes got dirty in the mud. We'd waited for a carriage to cross by in the, in the hayfields and jump onto the back, picking up other kids along the way. Ah, uh, the 20s. Sam would usually miss the jump and plod behind, uh, out of breath and useless by the time he got into town. Me, uh... And Tien? Etienne? Etienne? It, 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 okay, Etienne. I'll pronounce Etienne. And Charles would play soldiers, while Sam, Jules, and Simon would stay, would stay behind and make us mud pie rations. One time, Etienne and I climbed... Cli sorry. It needs to be a deep voice, because apparently I, I think this is like a detective guy? One time, Etienne and I climbed up to the roofs and pretended to fence with sticks until the sun went down. If Jules hadn't pulled me down, I doubt I would have remembered to go home. Simon always looked, looked so glum and we had to leave. 
If then... Oh no! Facebook! I then remembered the beatings that will usually follow these outings. Jules would try to take the blame, being the oldest. But the adults never bought it. We'd all get to bed hungry and with, with sore bottoms. Haha, <laughs> just like in real life. Pretending to feel bad. It's bad, but stifling laughter under our sheets, perfectly pleased with ourselves. It was hard not to laugh when the governess pretended to scold us in front of the parents, making goofy faces at us all the while. Oh! What was that? A crash to my, to my left breaks me out of my reminiscing. Some cat's been, been flung, flung butt over tea kettle down, uh, down the steps of a pub by the gruff looking security guard. Any pains hardly reflected by his day's expression, and I can smell the reek of liquor you know, on his breath as he locks eyes with me. As I pass by, he graces me with that tooth toothy jack-o'-lantern grin that's so distinctive of felines as he scampers off to find another hunt. His determination is almost... admirable. You know what? This whole thing would be so much easier with a few drinks in my system. Maybe the ca that cat's got the right idea after all. I got... I glance back at the pub. Despite the government's best efforts, prohibition in New Orleans never really stuck. People either bought brought their own from home or... Sorry. People either brought their own from home, or the owners kept it hidden away in their cellars. I look through the window and see the patrons inside singing joyfully off-key, playing cards, laughing. Even the bartender was getting in on the fun. Hmm. <laughs> no, it looks too rowdy. I'm looking for a soft, quiet, descending to unfeeling before it's time to go. So, then go to... Then go to, uh, what you call this, a cafe, then. Don't go to a pub if that's the problem. Oh wow, it's still raining. Okay. I follow the river out of habit and end up at the French Quarter, walking towards the welcoming lights that dot every window and veranda. Wait, what's that shadowy guy going? And why is he chasing a frog? Even with heavy rain, the color, comma, the color and playfulness of Bourbon Street. Hey, Bourbon Street, is, it sounds like a restaurant. <laughs> Can't be dampened in the slightest. A band playing soft jazz finish, finishes their set as I pass as a, a nightclub. Applause punctuated by the clink of glasses and murmurs of approval. I scan the area, looking for something more quiet. Intimate. The rain picks up and I wipe a few droplets off my brow with my other hand. Forgetting I'd been holding a bouquet this entire time- Wait, you- what?! You're holding a bouquet?! You don't even look like you're holding a bouquet! ARE YOU LYING TO ME, GAME?! A thorn pricks me a little and I recoil instinctively, cursing under my breath at the stupid thing. I glance at the letter hanging from the ribbon, holding the bundle together, unopened and practically turned to a pulp. What the hell am I doing holding on to this? Suddenly, I notice a red light in the distance, setting itself apart from the sea of orange gra gaslit lanterns. I feel drawn to it like a moth of a flame. Ah, it's a bar, apparently. The red is bright up but gentle, leading more towards the pink of a sweet hibiscus bloom than the blaze of real fire. Getting closer, I see that it's actually a neon sign, the lights flickering each time a droplet hits the tubes with a sizzle. The light glows gently through the steam, pouring out of the sewers below, practically covering the entire storefront. It looks ominous, a small dimly lit place surrounded by inky black on every side. But I'm not concerned with danger right now. I make a beeline for it, spotting a trash can on the corner. I dump the bouquet un unceremoniously and walk up to the building. The sign is fully vis visible now. A simple rendition of a wine glass and the words BAR underneath. Uncreative, but honest. Better yet, I don't hear the ca cacophony typical of a fully occupied club. Not even music? This is perfect. I walk- Ooh? He shrunk! Everybody, look! Small fry! I walk up to the doorway, using that what little cover is available to get some relief from the rain. I lean up against the door, trying to wring some of the excess water out of my shirt to no avail. Ah, ah well, I guess it won't matter. Besides, whoever owns the joint can't expect a dry customer with weather like this. I shrug and walk inside, a tiny bell chiming to signal my entry. The inside is wildly different than I expected from its humble exterior, looking more like a high roller's lounge than a speakeasy. There are tables for billiards and poker in the back, and cigarette dispensers lining the walls. 
Tending the bar is a tall, portly rabbit wearing a well-tailored suit. He hums to himself while, dr while drying some freshly washed glasses. He'd be totally unremarkable if not for the strange leather mask covering his face and ears. It makes his otherwise cuddly appearance a little sinister. He notices me making a wet spot by the door and waves me over with a friendly grin. Oh my god! That's... Oh, what the shorts! Whoa, look at that design! Sure is coming down out there, ain't it? Sure is. He speaks in that slow, charming Louisiana drawl I grew to love after moving here. He gestures for me, and he, apparently they're coming closer! They're gonna kiss me! <laughs> he gestures for me to come sit, and I trot over, my soaking wet paws making audible plapping on the hardwood floors. Did you just farted? Did, did you just farted? Did, how, how, how dare you? <laughs> for, first of all, sir. Why? <laughs> the bunny doesn't seem to mind the potential property damage and smiles as I awkwardly squeeze onto one of the vinyl-covered bar stools. The feeling of my damp butt against the grippy seat sends a shiver of dis displeasure up my spine. I shake it off and look at the rabbit who's staring back expectantly. Well, anything I can get you, sir? Can you make me a gimlet? Ah, but of course! Coming right up, sir. <laughs> okay, he starts shuffling around behind the counter and take a better look at him now that I'm up close. Mm. He looks what every <laughs> what every borough artist loves: big, bulky, and full of love. <laughs> He's husky for sure, but there's power underneath that cage of fluff. <laughs> I can tell from the way he effortlessly shovels bottlenecks through his fingers as if they weighed nothing. I imagine it simply comes with the job in this part of town. He occasionally looks back at me, clocking my stares. I expect at least a glimmer of disgust, the kind of a homophobic recoil I've grown used to. You're gay? Whoa, that's uh... Okay, th thank you for giving me information. That was out of nowhere, but... Okay. <laughs> but he's still pleasantly smiling at me. With a gentle pour, he finishes my drink, complete with a gold rim cocktail glass and a lime wedge. It looks amazing. If only there's a... If only there's a... A visual representation. Please enjoy, sir. Thanks. I take a slow sip, letting the alcohol linger on my tongue for a few seconds before I gulp it down. After the tingling in my throat subsides a ri Subsides, comma, I relax my shoulders, feeling calm for the first time in days, maybe weeks. Let's go over everything one more time, just to be sure. First, they'll find a note on my bed. I'm sure Simon will be mostly confused. Ed Edian will be angry. Neither will, will believe it. No telling what John will say. Either way, they'll probably try looking for me right away. I'm going to head east, find some tall trees well away from the roads. And then... Um... I look up and notice the bartender- Oh, he looks so cute when he's sad! <laughs> I look up and notice the bartender staring intently at me. I guess I got lost in thought. Again. Thoughts been troubling you? Yeah. You could say that. And I'm not keen on bar burying my soul to a random barkeep. Friendly or not. Ah, naturally. A solemn little possum sneaking out of his den to drink his problems away. And on a night like this... You'd have to be down on your luck. Well, I won't pry. A man has his reasons. But please, don't hesitate to let me know if I can help ease whatever's ailing you, sir. I take great pride in leasing my patrons rain or shine. Yeah, right. As if this is a problem that can simply be swept away. I glance over at the game tables once again. I wonder if this was his way of convincing people to waste their money on them. Would you be interested in a game or two, perhaps? Bingo. Sorry. Not my vice. Hmm. And what, if, if I may ask, is... Ooh! 
We're given three choices. That's wonderful. If I say the second one, what will I say? Well, you know. I make a vague gesture with my hands. Is it about this? Oh, sir, you shouldn't be asking about that, sir. You know? That's not much of a vice. Why, I do it all the time. What? You're doing... Oh, of course. Of course. The bunny has been doing it all the time. Apparently, a lot of people have been asking for him. <clears throat> I don't think we're talking about the same thing. You sure that's what's troubling you? Oh, I can ask all of them. Booze, okay. Drink. That's why I'm here. But of course. You sure that's what's brought troubling you? Running away? I guess. I just don't want to deal with my problems anymore. I tried to do what's expected of me. I tried to go against everything I was taught to believe. I tried to repair the broken bridge between me and the people I care about. I got shamed. Rejected. Used. Simon just looks at me like a fragile little leg. It could break at any moment. Jean only sees me as a tenant. Lord knows he's given me more chances than most. And then, and Edian, he just sees me as a mistake, keeps letting him stick his... I stop myself. I almost let something dangerous slip to a total stranger. Was the alcohol catching up to me? I only had one drink. It pains me to see you g coming through so much strife. It really does. Then why, are you, well, then why are you smiling? It's... It's nothing. Forget I said anything, really. I rest my face on my hands and sigh. I didn't feel any better after saying all that about out loud. I don't know if this is romance music, romance music, but... It does sound like you're romancing the rabbit. Maybe if it was someone who actually mattered. I feel a slight sting as my fingers pass over the scratch from those roses. Suddenly I remember. If someone named Christine comes by looking for me, can you give her this for me? Tell her I won't need it where I'm going. He takes the ring in his large paw and inspects it before pocketing it and nodding. <gasps> He's going to marry her! If it will put your mind at ease. It actually does, in a way. That was the final preparation. While it doesn't completely wipe away the guilt, there are no more strings left untied. That is, if you could indulge me in a simple gamble. I rolled my eyes. I already told you- He, he stops me and hold, holds a hand out, rolling a gold coin across his knuckles. It's nothing like that. Just a simple coin toss. Think of it as a good omen towards your travels. Before I can protest, he flicks the coin into the air, catching the light and glimmering as time ceases to slow for a moment. He catches it with the same hand and slams it on the desk, all in one swift motion. A trick. He's likely done hundreds of times before. Call it. Um. Save time. <laughs> If I say heads, what's gonna happen? Heads. You would pick that. He lifts his hand and reveals tails. I slump my shoulders. No oh <laughs> No what? Shame you didn't place anything on it. Ah, but didn't anyone tell you, son? Bets are best made when you already know you've won. But lucky for you, I'm feeling generous today. All I ask for you is one simple task. Fair enough. What is it? Nothing about this is actually fair. What am I to argue with a 500 pound bunny? He reaches under the, his collar and pulls out a blank playing card. He slides it across the counter to me, grinning coyly. Is that a calling card? A massage? He keeps it pressed down in front of me for an uncomfortably long time. Almost as if to make sure I know it's not a normal card. I nod and he pulls his hand back, going back to polishing that perpetually dirty glass. Just keep that on you for the time being. There's someone you have to give it to. Who? Oh, 
Oh, you'll know him when you see him. Trust me. Okay, then. Well, I guess I might as well oblige. This could be the last person I talk to. He gestures towards the door before facing, facing away from me, tending to his bar. Sounds like it come down out there. After I said anything, better get going before all hell breaks loose again. He was right. It was suddenly very quiet. Even the sounds of people's and cars were strangely absent now. It was still pitch black out. Maybe even more than before. It's been nice, uh... You can call me Virgil, sir. Hope to see you again. Yeah. Don't see that happen. As fun as that sounds. Right. I'll be going now. Virgil. Let's say Tails. Tails. A choice befitting of a man like you. He lifts his hand and reveals. Heads. Ah! I knew it! I knew that it, it, I knew that even when what we choose, you still lose. I get up and head for the door. Even though I want to leave, I feel a sinking spit in my stomach. I flam my peanuts at the car door like something awful is waiting for me on the other side. Maybe it's your friends from the other side. I've already made up my mind. There's no point in pussyfooting around this. I march towards the door defiantly. I get... I get about halfway before my legs feels heavy, as if I'm wearing sandbags around my ankles. I almost fall from the sudden resistance, but I take a deep breath and keep pushing. The room almost seems to stretch away from me. I try to look behind me, but the view of the room refuses to change. Fixed at one point like a painting. I suddenly feel the intense glare of a predator burning in my blind spot. Virgil? <coughs> Goodbye, Gray! A primal sense of dread makes me turn back around, and I spin towards the door, ignoring the burning on my thighs from what feels like lifting hundreds of pounds with each step. The hallway keeps stretching an impossible distance, but I can't stop moving. Not with that thing behind me. My knees turn to jelly and I collapse. I can barely catch my breath. My heart is beating out of my chest. Oh my god, is it like Sonic.dxe again? What the hell is going on? Did he put something in my drink after all? Am I going to die here like this? No, not like this. On my terms? I grab the dirty carpet and pull myself off the floor. The door seems to have stopped moving away. Almost seeming to do so out of pity. The bastard. I start crawling. Pain shooting through my knees each time they come down. Tears are burning down my face and I resist the urge of vomit. Time loses all meaning as I pathetically inch forward. Darkness fades into the tides of my vision. The idea of blacking out is sounding better and better by the second. But I can't. Something's telling me not to give in. I feel something burning against my leg. Something in my pocket. I take another deep breath and gather all my remaining energy for one final dash. The shadows in the room seem to warp into exaggerated shapes as I lean forward into a sprinting position. The gravity on me is suddenly released and I sail towards the door. I make contact with the knob and the room is flooded with intense red light. An impossibly loud siren blares behind me. I barely register any of it and fling the door open. The same inky black that seemed to surround the building before is now staring at me in the face. I swear I can see it blinked. And just like that, it's all around me. My body is violently corkscrewed into the void in front of me. All sense of direction is gone. My feet flail out uselessly searching for a solid surface. My stomach lurches and I turn, try to not to throw up. Even though I can't see, my body knows it's upside down and it's freaking out. Organs weren't meant to be in suspended uh, animation. My limbs are going numb. Is this... Huh. I always thought death would come quickly. I begged for it. Instead, it's a slow and cruel torture, drifting helplessly as, as infinity passes me by. I'm given one gift. Time. Time to reflect on everything. Oh my god! He became a constellation! Oh, what's the constellation for a rat? 
What birth month is it? November? My body is entirely numb now. I don't even need to blink anymore. I feel others here in the dark with me. They drift randomly passing through each other occasionally. Ghosts. I feel some sort of connection with them. Our bodies are gone, but our emotions extend outward like a extra limbs caress caressing each other gently. I ease another pain, another's pain with a pleasant memory of my own. The first time I fell in love. It is the only solace I can offer. Yet somehow it's the most important thing in the world to me. This is how things should be. Why didn't I help anyone with it when it really mattered? I waited and waited for someone to save me, and ignored what everyone else was going through. <sighs> I want to try again. I need to try again. You know, it's this. This sounds like kind of like the same thing that happened with Doctor Strange, that he has to save R R Roxanne or Celine. I forgot her name. Over and over and over again. And what happened is that it gave a bad ending to his story. You know, a multiverse story. As soon as a thought crosses my mind, my drift accelerates. I must be falling for 30 minutes! I feel warmth returning to my limbs. My bones crack and pop back to life. A glowing light surrounds me and the air vibrates with friction as I pass through layers of atmosphere towards something. I brace for what has, has to be certain death as the ground pulls up faster and faster, but... <laughs> Nothing. Well, hello! Are we dead? I'm in a grassy field dotted with yellow flowers. Dandelions, maybe? The sky is bathed with golden light. It's as if time were frozen at sunset. Crows caw in the distance and a warm breeze sweeps over the beautiful expanse. That circle of life, it moves the sun. Eventually passing over me and head towards a familiar looking building. The old house. The last time I saw it, I was looking back in disgust. Its former grandeur was replaced by peeling paint and rotting wood. But the house I'm looking at now is nothing of the sort. It looks as pristine and welcoming as it did when we were kids. A sudden rush of stimuli. After feeling frozen for so long makes me tear up with emotions. I wish we could have all played here, not just the other plantation kids. Edian, Simon, maybe even Sean if we had known him, then everyone deserves to experience this. I walk out towards the house and stop as I hear rustling from the tree line on either side of me. I'm still on guard despite everything. I crouch into tall, gla tall grass. Hoping it's enough to conceal my presence. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> unfortunately, a blade of grass finds its way up my nose, and I sneeze. Hachu! Loud. Hachu! <sighs> a moment passes, and I poke my head out to see four figures cautiously walking towards me. A well-dressed canine in glasses, carefully stepping around the flowers. A hefty shark wearing ripped clothing, stum stumbling over the uneven ground. A panther in leather scowling at the other three with his arms folded. A fox so small only his ears poke above the grass, pushing his way through with worn looking hands. My fear dissipates as, a, as they can come closer. I can see how gentle their faces are. Even the feline who is intent on looking annoyed is clearly admiring the beauty of his place. I stand up and give them all a knowing, knowing glance. Gesturing towards a flat area, we move over and sit down, the shark plopping down hard enough to cause a puff of flower petals to shoot out behind him. The wolf starts to laugh and we all follow suit as the bashful shark smiles a toothy grin. His teeth will be intimidating if they belong to anyone else, but I could feel his kindness radiating out of every pore. The fox clears his throat and speaks with a surprisingly loud voice, suggesting we all introduce ourselves. The panther sucks his teeth. SUCKS HIS TEETH?! How do you suck your how suck your teeth? <laughs> Plucking grass out of the roots with his idle hand one by one. After a moment of silence, the wolf speaks up, his deep voice rolling over my ears like warm honey. His name is Mark. Oh hi, Mark. <laughs> oh hi, Mark. Name's Mark. I was just coming from Midtown and uh, this is, far, this is as far as I figured out. He tells us he comes from the Big Apple and works at a museum. Fox smiles, glad at least one of us is playing along. He brushes his big bushy tail against my leg and goes next. 
My name is Yasahiro. But just Hiro is fine. He's Japanese, but traveled west to do contract work with a German engineering team. I nodded as he spoke, but knew this wasn't anywhere close to Europe, or any city for that matter. The shark spoke next. I'm sh here, here, um, he sighs before continuing on, smile never fading. Sorry, I'm, I'm Gabriel. I'm Gabriel. Nice to meet you. He's from California and was training for his college upcoming swim re relay race. Muffled music is coming from the headphones around his neck, and he taps his fingers to the beat against his muscular thighs. No Sprite? Really? No Sprite? I was expecting there would be Sprite. No? Ah, that sucks. <laughs> Another moment of silence passes before a hero jabs the panther in the ribs, glaring at him. Reluctantly, he gives, he gives us the shortest summary yet, never looking at any of us in the eyes. N Name's Ken. I'm a cyclist. Th that's it. Everyone seems satisfied with the answer, leaving only me. Um, my name's Gray. I'm from Louisiana, and this used to be my house. I say as I gesture towards the building behind us. They collectively scan the building up to top to bottom, ending at me with a puzzled look. Gabriel scratched his chin. So, so, do you know why we ended up here then? Mark lights a cigarette and takes a deep drag, exhaling smoke through his nostrils. <sighs> He looks just as confused as the rest of us, so I doubt it, so I doubt it. I glance over at Ken, a decent-sized pile of ripped grass that sits next to him, so as he notices my gaze, it stares daggers back. Either way, he's gonna have something to do with it. I swear, if I knew I'd tell you guys, I don't know why I'm here, either. I say this, hardly believing my own logic. Hero crawls over me and looks deep into my eyes, his little button nose only inches away from mine. Being this close, I notice how good he smells, despite his clothes being covered in dirt and machine oil. His fur smelled clean and earthy, almost medically sterile like rubbing alcohol. Hmm, I don't think he's lying. He stands up, brushing grass off his trousers. And even if he was, that's not much to gain here. I sense no matters in this place. Ken's ears perk up at, at the last remark, and he looks interested for the first time. Yeah. Um, me either. <laughs> Mark sighs and lays down on the grass, resting his head next to Hero's outstretched legs. As confusing as this all is, I have to admit, it's pretty nice here, ain't it? I take everyone's soft silence as confirmation and lay down next to Mark. The dry grass that always tickled and prickled and mickled and trickled and lickled pricked me as a kid that suddenly feels softer than any bed I've ever laid in. Mark chuckles and fluckles and flicks my snout with his ear. Happy I follow his trend. Soon the others join us laying in, in the circle. Okay! This is very interesting. So, like, this is Gray? This... Uh, oh my! Oh dear... This is Ken? No, no, no. This is Ken. I know this is Gray. For sure, this is Gray, and this is Mark, I think. Yeah, this is Mark. This is cigarette. This is Mark. This is Hero. Whoa. This is Gabriel. This is Ken. Okay, then Ken looks cool. I like Hero though, even though he. Yeah, I like I like Hero and Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel looks cool. Gabriel looks cool. I like Gabriel. I I want him as my dad. <laughs> we lay for what feels like hours. Every minute feels surreal, as if we were distant friends who finally met for the first time. The conversation came quick and easy, and pretty soon even Ken was joining in, albeit less frequently. Golden light intensifies and this feeling of serenity overtakes me. I feel tears start to swell, well up again, and I brush them away before anyone notices. I glance up at the, other, oh, at the others and feel relieved seeing them rub their own glossy eyes. To be honest, I really like this art style, because it looks like a comic, which I love. Gabriel is practically sobbing, making no attempt at considering his emotions. Oh gosh, he needs to have a very ru husky, roughy boy voice. Ken is more insistent on sniffling and writing it the way it, as a bout of hay fever. But at this point, I've come to accept his sto stoicism as, a, as him being genuine. 
After another few minutes of silence, I speak up, my voice cracking a bit. I wish. I hear the rustles around me as everyone shifts to hear me better. I wish we could just lay like this, stay like this forever. Everyone agrees. Gabriel's starting to blubber again. Then why do I feel so sad? Perfect! <laughs> he chokes through gritted teeth. Hero turns over in on his stomach and pats Gabriel's shoulder. I know what you mean! I feel Ken's tail brush mine, and I glance over and seeing something that shakes me out of my cheery mood. I can see through his body. What? What do you mean through his body? I shoot up and look back at everyone and see they're all fading away one by one. I yell. I try to reach out to them, but I'm frozen in place. I swipe where Mark's shoulder should be, but instead I hit the ground beneath. The final outlines of their phantom form fade out, and all that's left are the sounds of gentle sobbing. My own. I'm alone again. Oh my god! They look so sad. This isn't fair. I wasn't foolish enough to believe in heaven until now, but for a brief moment... What is going on? I was willing to believe in something. Anything, if it meant we could stay together like this. I hunch up for sobbing into my arms, not caring about the mud soiling my sleeves or the snot running down on my, into my whiskers. I stay like this for what about, what about me, 20 minutes, refusing to look at the spot where they once lay. I could tell the light was dimming through the cracks between my crossed arms. The warm air was replaced by cool, wet mist. This is how I remember it. This is reality. The jaw aches and, and my eyes sting. My pants pinch my waist comfortably. I can't stay here. Whatever this is. I reluctantly sit up and wipe my mess of a snout off with the less with the last clean section of my sleeve when I notice something glimmering in the, in the grass ahead. I inch closer and see a rectangle laying where Mark was before. It's a Oh, it's a card. Ah, oh, fantastic. Knights College edition again. Okay. This is about cards again. I what is this what is this going to be about? Are we going to have choices by cards again? What the frick? I pick it up and turn it over, examining the int intricate art. It's definitely a picture of Mark. Oh yeah, oh hi Mark. Suddenly, hey, Mark and I have the same glasses, color glasses, but the same. Suddenly I feel the sa that same warm in my pocket again. I felt and pull out another card. The one Virgil gave me. I entirely forgot about it until now. It's almost hot at this point, radiating light and vibrating in my hand as if it were about to burst. I hold it up to the other card. They're the same size and, and shape, albeit Virgil's card was blank. Hmm. I hear something from deep within me speak. I freeze. Something unknown thing within me is suddenly making their presence known. Its voice is deep and booming as if it's yelling into an empty cathedral. Um, is it your, your yummy self? Your yummy Yugi? I should be terrified, but its message is clear. Take the card and summon Exodia! Choose. Save him? Oh, well, uh, okay, then save him. Mm, okay, save him. I took a deep breath and do whatever these mysterious forces obviously want me to do. I place the cards together in my hand. Immediately, they start to glow and vibrate. Ooh, I throw out my other hand to, to try and keep them from falling. But soon, the light envelops everything around me. And I'm falling, falling, falling past again. Ugh. And then it says to be continued. My body is floating again. Not as aimlessly as before. Feels like I'm being guided in a specific direction this time. I glance around this new space. It's an empty, grey expanse of swirling mist. The air is humid, as if just finished raining. Through there was no, was no ground in this place. Strange pillars stretch into the sky from below. As I drift past one, I see it's actually a tower of intricately stacked stones. One over the other. All the same size and shape. Uh, 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 huh? Acorn? 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 Uh, is that J Japanese? Acorn! Why, why do I know that word? <laughs> the speed intensifies and I brace for impact again, expecting the same weightless feeling and... <sighs> it's cold. Ow! 
It's bad enough I landed on my butt, but did the ground have to be freezing? I pick myself up and see that I'm covered in snow. Not the cute powdery kind. Is that it's the chunky frozen kind that sticks to your clothes like icy glue. Oh, hello! Where are we? Are we in New York? A loud car horn snaps me into focus, and I find myself in the front of a massive department store, surrounded by, surrounded by even bigger buildings. I dust myself off and glance at the store's display window. The gold lettering reads, Stacy's Herald Square. Hmm. Wait, I've heard of this place before, but it's in... Am I in New York? Hey, I got it right! Like, freaking New York? New, New York? New York! Dun, 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 Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. And oh, I'm gonna be a part of it. In bloody New York! Sunday. Sunday! Sunday! December 26! I spin around and am taken aback by the myriad of shining jewel-like lights that dot the skyline in front of me, stretching out into that what feels like infinity. People hurry past me wearing colorful winter clothing. I feel severely underdressed. Um, you are, especially on the cold weather in your white long sleeves and slacks. The designs of the clothes are much sleeker than what I was used to seeing in the odd catalogs Simon left around the house. And again, the colors! The colors! They almost look like a doll's clothes, especially with how, f how form-fitting everything was. I knew New York was a fashion capital, but some of these women were running around with their legs on full display, even with stockings on. Uh, aren't they cold? Aren't you cold, man? Next thing to grab my attention are the gigantic buildings in the distance, such stretching even higher than the skyscraper in Chicago fa father told me about. The Adams and LaSalle. LaSalle? La there's, a, there's a LaSalle? LaSalle here is a school. Those somber coffees of glass and cement practically reach into the clouds, almost like those sto stone towers I saw earlier. Carnes. I wonder if the people who work in them are, ever feel nauseous, or if they can feel the building sway when, when it's windy. The idea of it makes me my stomach drop, and I crouch down, feeling like I wanted to vomit again. Don't tell me you have caught you have caught an acrophobia. If I've been. Hey! 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 Stop! <laughs> Every now and then, someone would shoot me a w w worried glance. Some even scowled. Eventually, they all pressed on, forgetting me as soon as they as they saw me. I shouldn't be offended. I don't even know these people. But still, it hurts a little. Just how bad did I look? I walk back to the display window to take a better look, but something is wrong. What the frick? Yeah, okay, let's go here. <laughs> why can't I see my why can I see myself? Was this some kind of special glass? You're a vampire? No. I can see everything behind me just fine. My heart starts to raise. I press my nose to the glass. I look in into it until my eyes practically cross. I stare I stare a hole into into where the reflection of my eyes should be. Nothing. I sink down on my knees, barely noticing. Barely noticing the stinging snow under my under me, people behind me walk through walk through where my head should be. Ugh, I must look crazy. Am I then dead? I see more things that don't make sense pass by the window's reflection. Models of cars sleeker than anything in even my father's garage. Christmas songs I've never even heard of reverberating out of open store windows. A woman in a skirt too short to even be considered a slip, walking with a man who slips a dollar between her exposed cleavage. <laughs> hey, that's normal. This isn't right. I, I, I shouldn't be here. But I really don't feel like moving anymore. I'm, I'm too scared by whatever's waiting for me in this strange place. Too many variables. The metal vent I'm kneeling on is starting to cut into my shin. The snow is starting to soak through my clothes and I notice I'm violently shivering. It's the middle of winter in New York, and I'm out here in slacks and a ruddy shirt with no shoes. Wait, you don't have shoes? What? Wait, where are your shoes? 
Why don't you wear any shoes? I know exactly why nobody's bothering to get near me. I don't blame them. Tomorrow's orbit obituary. Unidentified vagrant possum found frozen to death outside shopping center. Nobody's from home is going to find me in this far east. <laughs> what do I care? I was about to hang myself from the nearest tree, remember? Well, that got a bit dark! <laughs> it was supposed to happen one way or another. My fingers and toes are numb. I can't, I could barely move. I don't know what to do. I don't. A yellow cab pulls up behind me, stopping right be between where my eyes should be reflected. I wipe my nose and blink back into consciousness. I can sort of hear a conversation back there. Wait, is Mark a taxi driver? The driver is saying something to the passenger. A laugh. Some coins are dropped and hastily picked up. And then I see him step out. Mark, I was right! Wait, no, Mark is the passenger. Right? Mark? It's, it's really him. Same suit, same shockingly long legs, same smile. He bumps his head, getting out of the cab and chuckles to himself before slamming the door behind him. He swings his briefcase over his shoulder and starts be heading towards me, whistling Carol of the Bells to himself. I perk up, both happy to see him and and I'm also extremely confused. Is this real? What was all that pull shorts for? Before I wince as I turn my body around to watch him, that numb feeling in my fingers becoming a slow burn. Watching him approach, I look for any glimmer of recognition in his eyes. He walks a few feet past me and heads straight for the front door. <laughs> of course. It's exactly like I thought. I'm the one who doesn't belong here. Mark looks like he's doing fine. <laughs> Why should I bother him? He slowly reaches for the brass handle. Very slowly. I notice he is looking at me. Or rather, stealing quick glances at me before he thought I'd notice. Well, I look like shorts. That much is obvious. Everyone else has avoided me like the plague. A minute passes, and he still not managed to open the door. Was it heavy or something? Was the knob too cold? I shoot him a confused glance. He stares back and looks away flustered. Does he recognize me after all? It looks like he made up his mind, mind this time. He swings open the door, open with one hand, confidently striking a pose as if he's about to ride it straight in. But he looks like looks at me again with those sworn, gentle eyes. His shoulders droop and he lets the, the door swing close again. He mutters him, something to himself, and almost argumentative. I have no idea what's going on, but I, I blink and he's is in front of me. I reflexively flinch and fall on my back. It must be those legs. He, he cleared that distance in less than a second. He gently drops his briefcase on the ground next to his feet and bends down, reaching a pod out to me. Oh my god! He is a long boy! With stomach! Hey, um... Do you need some help, man? It's a, it's bad out here. I, I, I could almost cry. It, it's still Mark. Of course it's, he'd help me. Even if we'd, he'd never met. I must have let my emotions show because his hand drops a bit in surprise. He chuckles and pushes his glasses back up his snub with his other hand. Maybe something to eat? Some place warm? I know a spot not far from here. I take his hand and he pulls me to my feet. Where is this? Where is the sprite for the other guy, Gray? Where is the sprite? I want to see that! I take his hand and he pulls me to my feet. I brush the snow off myself and try to come up with something not crazy to reply with. Oh, there he is! Okay. Thanks. Um, yes, uh, I could really use that right now. I avoid addressing him by name as that would definitely freak him out. We didn't meet for long, but even during that time, he was surprisingly tight lip about his personal life. Guess we'll have to, to redo most of the formalities if this is going to feel organic. Uh, are you sure this is okay? Me going with you, I, I mean? I hold my jaw to stop my teeth from chattering. He's already turned to walk away, beckoning for me to follow him. Huh? Huh? Of course! Anybody that has a problem with it will have a problem with me! He pauses before spinning around and gives me a serious look. Whatever your reasons, nobody deserves to live like that. Yep. He thinks I'm a bum. 
Well, I am out here doing my best bomb impression, so I can't be too annoyed. But it's not like I can explain how I really end up, ended up here. I'll need to think of an alibi in this walk. I really don't want him to think poorly of me. He navigates the winding, the winding city streets nimbly, dodging oncoming pedestrians and hopping over potholes like some intricate dance it perfected. Those legs. Those beautiful legs! Right, an alibi. Maybe I hopped a freight train, wanted to see the world, and got lost, got lost here. Or perhaps my wife kicked me out after a big fight and I'm still looking for a place to... Uh, he jumped over, uh, over dog poop <laughs> without even looking. Wow. Um, so if I use that one, I'll need some names. I'm sure Christine wouldn't mind. We fought because she's seeing another man. Ah, she cheated. And we're here. Short. I look up and see a little hole in, in the wall shop. Caravan Cafe. The, si the sign has a motive of a little black cat in a romantic get up brewing coffee. I promise the coffee is better than the name. Come on! R r right. Oh, wow, it is a cafe! A little bell jingles overhead as we walk in. I'm immediately hit by the smell of cigarette smoke mingling with coffee beans. The warmth from just opening the doors brings feeling back uh, onto my face and Mark tugs at my sleeve. My regular tables, Verderin! We squeeze past the narrow tables up towards the back. The place is mostly occupied by teenagers reading poetry and doing homework. <laughs> this must be the cool kids. <laughs> I even see a few jittery college-age kids with, with a worrying amount of empty cups littering their table. We eventually arrive at a little white table in the, black co in the back corner. A spindly leaves hang down from rows of planters mounted on the wall, and there's a dirty mirror decorated with a colorful tile border where a window would be if this wasn't such a tiny place. Compared to the chaotic facade, this part of the story is actually pretty quiet. I'm surprised none of them picked this table to study. It's nice back here. Mark's ears twitch, and he glances excitedly at me. I realize this is, mo this is the most casual I've sounded so far. Ah! Well, I suspect it's because they get better service up front. One man's treasure, right? I nod. I nod and sit down, feeling the off-putting sensation of my wet butt against rubber for the f second time today. He waves to someone behind me as an older female squirrel walks up with some menus and, w and water. Single pieces of paper encased in plastic and not a single English word on them. Before I can ask anything, she's already darted back to the counter to greet some, some more kids walking in. Mark chuckles and slides his menu to the side, likely having a regular order here already. He looks at me expectantly. So, how... Mark. Name's Mark. I smile a little, wondering how long he'd been waiting to use that line. At least I don't have to keep pretending not to know it. <laughs> All right. Well met. I tell him my name in return. He nods as we shake hands, happy to have successfully completed the first hur hurdle of conversation. I twiddle my thumbs, trying to think of something to say. He notices my fidgeting and places a hand over mine. Hey, it's okay if you don't want to talk about yourself today. T t yourself yet. Are you sure? Of course! Nobody chooses to reside on the streets. I'm sure it was out of, my, out, of, out of your control. That's pretty presumptuous. But I know he means well. He leans back in his seat, brushing a stray palm of, f front off of, my, of his face. And even if it was your fault, we all deserve a second chance, especially time of the time of year. <laughs> I remember the music. I heard earlier and assume, and assume it's still December. Unless there's a song called Sasha Peep 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 Boobie Lee 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 Christmas. It's gotta be Christmas. Or it's after Christmas. All I want for Christmas is you. Yeah. Christmas is always my favorite time of year too. Mark looks at me puzzled. His long ears perking up, I'm like, uh huh? Really? Um, afraid you're a day late for that one, Gray. I force an awkward. Wait, did he mention his name? I forgot. I force an awkward laugh and look at the side. Wow, how long was I out there? 
I must have lost track of time. <laughs> he looks more annoyed than confused now. Shorts! New Year's then? He sighs and adjusts his color. <clears throat> Phew, you had, you had me worried for a second. That's on me, though. I should have considered you wouldn't have a way to keep dates. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're good. Honest. No, if I'm being honest, I'd rather talk about anything else right now if, it, if that's all right. As if on cue, the waitress comes back to take orders. This is obviously the last stop on her route as she hadn't checked on us in, in at least five minutes. I realize I haven't looked at the menu yet. She taps her pen on her notepad impatiently. You two need more time. Sorry. I look at Mark and he picks up on my naivete. We'll have two cappuccinos. Swell. I'll have those coming in by in a few. She trots away, her fluffy tail obscuring my, most of her body. I, I sigh in relief and then thank Mark for doing me a solid. I've never been to an Italian-style cafe before. Are cappuccinos good? It's a little more bitter than French coffee, but you wouldn't notice until you're in a, an aficionado. <laughs> I'm definitely no expert. <laughs> <laughs> I think of all this sugary French press coffee we'd get at the bakeries back home. Usually with warm beignets, dripping in honey, and a bag of donuts to take home. My stomach growls. Oh no! Maybe we should get some pastries along with those drinks? <laughs> I blush. I was probably already pretty red from being nearly frozen to death. Not a bad idea. So, Mark? Hmm? Tell me more about yourself. Not fair to have all the questions be aimed at me, is it? That may have been a little bold, but I'll say anything to get the attention off of me. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm actually an archivist at a museum. Ever, ever been to the Mama? Um, no. I'm still fairly new around here. Like, ten minutes new! So, you work in the arts? That's a very sophisticated field. And you definitely look the part. I gesture to this outfit and he shoots me a wink. Comes with the job! Though I guess sophisticated depends on your point of view. Art is pretty subjective. A lot of contemporary works are considered as challenging by your old, older patrons. Personally, I want to see our galleries focus on what was the intention, what, what, what has the attention of the masses right now, not, not what wowed them over 50 years ago. The new generation are standing at the precipice of the, of the next cultural zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, sorry. Frankly, things have been this exciting in the art of world for ages. His amber eyes are sparkling. I can tell this is something he's really passionate about. Tra passionate about. It's it's really cute, especially from such a big guy. <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, art is what we make of it. That's so naturally it will change as culture ev culture evolves. I remember seeing a piece of by the champ that I tried to wrap my head around for almost an hour. I don't think I really got it, but it left an impression. He cocks his head to the side, still smiling but with furrowed brows. The champ, eh? He was revolutionary for certain, but that's not. But not, that's not exactly modern. Right now, it's all about Leichten, Leichtenstein and Warhol. You know the stuff they do downtown. It's completely outrageous, but that's what's so great about it. Huh? But that painting, what's in? In recent exhibition, no? At least when I saw, saw it in Philadelphia. That couldn't be! I would I would have heard about the champ exhibit even if it were in Vienna! Let alone Philly! I'm losing control of the narrative. I need to change the subject, but it's keeping him engaged. That feeling of something being off is rearing its ugly head again. Again, as if on cue, the waitress plops down the two steaming cups between us and tosses some sugar packets at me. I shoot her an awkward thumbs up, ignoring the blatant aggression. She seems satisfied with this and walks back to her station, swatting me with her tail as she turns. Mark grimaces at her before turning his attention to the drinks, gleefully grabbing one and lapping at the foam like a puppy who hasn't learned to take it, to take sips yet. All right, <laughs> it's all right. She can be a real card sometimes, some days because. 
You're also part of the cars, too! I don't think it's you she's mad at. I shrug and look at the cappuccino. It's pale. Is it all foam? I smile at Mark as I bring the cup to my lips. I wanted to, to appear ungrateful for the free food. I take a sip. Uh, uh, it's bitter. I quickly tear open tear open a sugar packet and stir it in, but it's still got a vile burnt flavor. My disgust must be apparent because I hear Mark giggling. I sigh and give up, pushing the cup away. Hey, it's fine! If you don't like it, we can order something else. I know you don't get treated like this often, so I'd rather you get something you actually like. Thanks. Really. Maybe just a muffin or something. You don't need to go all out for me. Please, please. What could what could that have a cost? A dollar? <laughs> a, do a dollar? Mark looks surprised, and I, and no I know I've said something weird again. Maybe I... He's so cute when he does this. I don't know why. <laughs> He's like, he's so innocent when he does this. <laughs> Maybe I don't drink the fanciest imported brands, but I've never paid more than 10 cents for a cup of joe. Everything I've heard about New York is true. How do these people live? Hey, are you sure you're all right? I hastily nod. I'm about to offer another excuse when I catch stray fragments of a conversation on the front counter. The same surly waitress is yelling into the phone while angrily flipping through some papers. No, no, no! I said the poster should read Rain in 66 with Caravan Cafe, not Minivan Cafe! What the hell is a Minivan Cafe anyway? Does it make sense to you? Man, what a... what an itch! Wait, 66? There's no way this place has been open 66 years with service this bad. So, that must mean... hey... Am I going deaf from her screeching, or did she just say 66? Ha! <laughs> yeah! Right? Hard to believe how fast this year blew by. Can't say it was a great year for me, so... Good riddance to 1965, as far as I'm concerned. The room feels like it's closing in. I'm 37 years in the future? I imagine what my friends must look like now. Wait a minute. 1966? That cannot be! You must use calculator! Wait a minute. 66 minus 37 years? Oh! So basically, what happened with Grave from the past it was on 1929! How interesting! Very, very interesting! I imagine what my friends must look like now. They're all still alive. My parents are probably dead. Uh, quiet notion that was gnawing away at me is loud and clear now. How are people supposed to respond in this situation? Strangely, I don't feel much of anything. That's probably a normal trauma response. This is fine. <laughs> I can deal with this later when whatever this is is, is over. <laughs> Gray! Gray! I snap to attention. <gasps> you went quiet on me! You went quiet on me, buddy! What's wrong? I... Um, Gray, whatever it is, you can tell me. Ooh, how ch charming. If, I don't know, if I say tell him the truth, what's going to happen? I can't keep keep up the charade anymore, forever. It wouldn't be fair to him. I take a deep breath and tell him everything. About Virgin, that nightmare bar. About meeting him and everyone else in that beautiful place. About magically traveling to New York by means... I don't fully understand myself. I talk for what feels like an hour, not breaking eye contact so he knows I'm being serious. <laughs> he says he almost sounds like a madman if he does that. He doesn't interrupt me the entire time. Occasionally he'd nod or take a sip of water. I can't read his face. Finally, I finish and lean back in my seat. There's something else I can do now. Mark goes down the rest of his coffee before, before speaking up. Maybe I should gulp down some water too before speaking up because apparently this is gonna be good. That's certainly a lot to go through through in one night. You must be so tired. So you believe me then? He leans forward, looking at me intently. It's not so much that I believe everything you told me, but your feelings are real, and that's important. And if what you said is true, 
You had, you've had a hell of a day. I'm stunned. At best, I expected him to write me off as another lunatic roaming the streets. Because you kind of are. <laughs> Chalk this up to a failed experiment in charity and bid me farewell. But he's taking this way better than, I ex than expected. I feel a little less crazy. I mean, this is real, right? We're sitting here talking and eating and talking. There's an explanation for this out here, out there somewhere, and I'll find it. Mark takes my silence as a cue to stand up and pat me on the head before turning to head out of the shop. Oh, wow, look at that. It's beautiful. We walk back out and wince at the cold air hitting my snout. It's only six, but the sun's completely set. I see it stopped snowing and, and, and sighed with relief. Mark chuckles and walks the curb, sticking out a thumb. Don't worry. I, was I wasn't planning on leaving you out here again. Huh? He successfully waves down the taxi and gestures for me to come over. You can stay with me for a couple of days. I have tomorrow off already. Maybe I can give you a little tour of the city, hmm? This day keeps getting more and more surreal. Regardless of how sketchy this will be in normal circumstances, I'm not above staying at the stranger's house. I mean, you really need to, dear, because... You have... Many things to lose, apparently. Especially if the alternative is staying out here. Th that sounds fun. I'd be delighted. I'm not even lying. Apart from all of this weird shorts going on, spending a day sightseeing with Mark sounds incredible. A duck into the cab and he follows out. He has to slouch so his head isn't poking into the roof, but he's probably used to, used to it at this point. The cabbie is merciful and spares us the chit-chat. Mark only having to give him an occasional comment about directions. We ride silently for a while, the fallen snow muting the cacophony of the city around us. For the first time in what feels like ages, I feel things are finally calm. Before the storm. I feel Mark place a hand on my, on my thigh. I shoot him a smile, reciprocating by linking arms and placing my hand over his. What? <laughs> well, that what that's a gay move. Uh, okay. Everything is so cozy. <laughs> Maybe Mark is a bit, a bit of a predator. <laughs> Someone's shaking my shoulder. I feel drool on my chin. Did I fall asleep? <laughs> Something about long car rides will always put me in a trance. I crack open my eyes. Mark's still rocking me awake. Time to go out, sleepyhead. Uh, oh, wow, that looks so cool. Ah, I'm sorry. <sighs> Guess I'm more worn out than I thought. We shuffle out the... We shuffle out the cab and back into the chilly air. It's evening now and the streetlights are blazing. So this is your place, huh? I'm staring at the luxurious looking high-rise apartment building. It must be at least 30 floors. Mark chuckles and pats me on the back. Come on, let's get you inside. I nod and follow him down the cobblestone path into the lobby. Oh wow. I step inside, as expected it's an upscale place with a sign-in sheet when lobby attendant. It's an art deco theme that wouldn't seem that out of place in my own time. Mark heads over to sign us in, makes small talk with a woman. I wonder over I, I wander over to cut to some tiny trees planted in a bed of little stones. I accidentally take one and roll it around my hands. It's smooth and cool. I try to imitate the way Virgil rolls coins across his knuckles, but it's too big. I feel a hand on my bag again and almost drop it. See, something you like? Ah! Well, no, uh, I guess. It's something like I, li I like to do when I visit a new place. Hmm, like a keepsake? S sort of. It's something my grandmother used to do. She had all kinds of strange habits. There was always a reasoning behind them. You need to acquaint yourself with the land first so it's friendly. After all, you're about to trample on it, ain't you? Better to knock first. I slide the rocket to my pocket and follow him over to the elevator. Of all the technological advancements I've seen so far, this is the one I've, I've been the most curious about. There's no way an elevator, an elevator operator would want to ride up and down these huge buildings all day. Right? The brass door is open, and it's empty. Satisfied with my correct guess, I march in and lean against the wall, 
Mark presses the button for the top floor and the doors close automatically. I eagerly anticipate what the, what the rest of this place lo looks like as we ascend. We arrive and step out in the, ha in the hallway. It's lined with some inoffensive landscape portraits and a few plants here and there. I follow Mark down the hall to the last door. 35E. I try not to think about how, how high we are. Keys jingle and he leads me inside. Welcome to Casa de Mark! Casa de Mark looks a little messy. <laughs> Somehow this is even more out, the, out there than I anticipated. Odd paintings of every shape and size hang on the walls. Sculptures and figures that don't even begin to approach standard anatomy are strange, strategically placed in the corners of the living room. Tribal masks are hung over the fireplace with tiny hand-painted figurines on the mantel. I turn to look at Mark and he's practically beaming. Well, what do you think? I've been slowly buying my favorites from our collection for a few years now. If I didn't know he worked at a museum, my second guess would be a thief or a schizophrenic. It's unique. Uh, it's definitely you. <laughs> uh huh. And what's that really mean? Uh, this is all pretty beyond me. Uh, sorry. If you explain some of it to me, I'd be able to appreciate it. Appreciate it more. He nods and points at the nearest painting to me. It's an extremely abstract piece with platters of green and purple paint. There's a single drip of yellow down the center and little black scribbles of humanoid figures that seem placed randomly. This was done by a young, dark-furred man down in the village. Done in THE village. We did a little showcase of local talent a few years back. I believe the contrasting colors and manic energy of the piece representing social unrest caused by the poor race relations in our supposed modern society. That's the yellow- what's the yellow represent? Uh, I think a janitor was using it as a table after the exhibition closed. That's probably a mustard. Ouch. Guess Mark saw something in it, so n nobody else did. I search around for another one and see a small portrait of a fox with green fur and cut out newspaper clippings where his features would be. Uh, where is it? This? Or this? I don't know! And this one? Ah, oh, good eye! That's actually a vintage piece from the data. Dadaist movement. The absurdity of the image is a direct response to the pointlessness of war. This was probably done by a small group of rebel artists trying to desperately to transpose their feelings about the First World War. First? There were more? I'm gonna have to find a history book at some point and catch up. Yeesh. Okay. And what's with the big wide one behind you? I point at the huge blank canvas that takes up most of the west wall. Mark hunches over and searching for something before pointing at the bottom corner. I squint and see a little signature in pencil. Henry Gerber. Isn't it great? Uh, sure. He laughs and stops to wipe his glasses on his sweater before explaining. It's a blank canvas signed by an unknown. I found it at the flea market seven years ago and, have to, and had to have it. You see, I have no idea who this person is now. But who knows? In a few years, they might be a... Household name, taking the art world by storm! So, when that day comes, I'll be the proud owner of an original Henry Gerber! <laughs> I, I can't help but smile. His endless optimism is charming. I take a seat on the couch and pat the cushion next to me. Without hesitation, he, he closes up next to me. Clearly happy to finally stretch, up, tr stretch his legs. It's all impressive. There's no doubt about it. But I'd be happy whether you lived here or in a sh short shack. Mark slides his loafers off and props his paws on the ottoman. I hear a few joints pop as he yawns and stretches, slightly placing an arm around me. Ah! Ah! Where is this going? Anything beats New York in winter. But this is probably better than a poop shack. No, it definitely is. Decorations aside. This place was immaculate. Not a speck of dust or item out of place. It doesn't feel lived. It doesn't feel lived in. It lived in at all. And I appreciate a tidy housemate. My old roommates were slobs. Probably not a great idea to put the magnifying glass back on me, but I'm feeling more comfortable now. <laughs> I'll bet. I don't really spend much time here. Truth be told, you're actually the first guest I've I've had here. Seriously? <laughs> I've been showing off this place. I've been showing this place up every chance I got. 
What about your friends? His expression softens and he looks down. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I don't have many of those. I feel like a butt for bringing it up. I don't get how someone as outgoing and friendly as Mark would be a loner. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. That was a normal thing to ask. I hear it all the time at work. I'm used to people worrying about me. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I lean into him. Whatever pre apprehension he had with that arm behind me is gone and he gently hangs it around my neck. What is this? What are you doing? If tomorrow... Uh, it's getting closer. If tomorrow goes well and I can find a way to pay you back for all of this, I wouldn't mind being friends. Really? Are you sure? You've been nice to me all day. Do you plan on stopping anytime soon? He pulls me in a little tight. Okay. Okay, Mark! Where are we going with this? He pulls me in a little tighter. No. I don't. Good. We sit there for a while, just listening to the sounds of the city and the ticking of a clock. Eventually, Mark yawns and we start to get ready for bed. I update the couch, despite his protest. I assure him I'll sleep just fine and he turns off the lights. Mm, that's a very loud no night! This doesn't sound as exactly as the nighttime in New York, because New York never sleeps. It's a city that never sleeps! I'm wiped. My concept of linear time has completely gone out the window, but I knew that my body and mind were at its limit. I pulled the sheet he supplied over me and tried to relax. Ugh, but my mind is still racing. There were so many things I still can't explain. And Virgil, that horrifying thing that chased me. I shudder. Let's, let's think about something more pleasant, shall we? Mark. Mark is very pleasant. He'd be the picture next to the word pleasant in any encyclopedia. And very effing cute. Is he into me? Are people still in the closet in the future? Yes! Apparently, in the 60s, there's, it's st there's still a stigma when people are... When people are gay. There's still a stigma in that time. He got awfully close earlier, and he smelled really good. I feel something in my trousers staring, out, staring and trying to change the subject before I get too horned up. <laughs> you must firmly grasp it now. Feel it. I know, you know the feeling is true. You're horny. What are my friends doing now? Are they still in New Orleans? Did they ever stop looking for me? Did my family care? <laughs> These thoughts aren't helping. I'm too tired for this. I focus on the ticking of the clock. I count the rhythm in my mind. Tick. Talk. Tick. I stare out of a deep rest. What happened? All oh, right, this is Mark's place. It's still dark, so it couldn't be, have been more than an hour since I fell asleep. I slowly open my eyes to check the clock on the wall. A sudden flash of light blurs my vision and I rub my weary eyes. The TV! That's what Mark... That's what Mark called it! The TV! Why was it on now? I sit up and that's when I see it. Mark is here staring at me. Ah! My again, Mark! <laughs> A predator! Mark is here, staring at me. I almost fall off the couch. M Mark? What are you? Is something wrong? He doesn't say anything. He just smiles at me. Like this. It's so creepy, too. And look at that! He's getting ready! His eyes look blank. Was he sleepwalking? Mark? Suddenly the TV starts playing in a recording. Everyone ready to rain in the year? The ball is coming down! Five seconds left and now, count with me! What the hell? Thank <laughs> you.
Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Mark, what was? Oh my god! I don't know what I'm looking at, but oh my god! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mm, uh, all right. Okay. Mm, ah. <gasps> what am I looking at? Oh no. <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> I fall to the floor. <gasps> Everything is wet. It smells like iron. Blood. What the freak was that? I can't bring myself to look at it. I hear something dripping slowly. The carpet is sticky like syrup and stained beyond recognition. This isn't real. This can't be freaking real. I fumbled around still covering my eyes and touched something solid and squishy. It's the texture of ground beef. Something awful, awful flashes through my mind and I rip my hand away. My stomach turns and I wrench finally onto the floor. The light flooding into the room is a harsh red and I feel my head start to throb. I tried to get up, but slip in the horrible mess of everything and bang my chin on the edge of the couch. Before the awful wet texture all over the front of me can fully register, I pull myself up again. Adrenaline's kicking in. Frick everything else! I need to get out of here! I quickly stumble over the door and try to undo the locks. My hands are shaking and slick with blood. I struggle with the chain a few times before I just yank the door open. No time to worry about a broken chain. Th nothing about this is fixable anyway. <gasps> okay, this is scary now! <laughs> I spin into the hallway. My socks are completely soaked and I quickly pull them off and toss them to the side. Smart boy! Very good! I can't risk falling again. Everything here is distorted and uneven. The canvas of the painting have run it away. I, I, I head towards the elevator, but something has grown over the doors. Grown? Over the doors? Something organic. It's pulsing. No time. I look to the left and see a sign. Rooftop access. I need to get outside. Something is happening. I sail up the short, winding staircase and burst out on the roof. Oh my god! What is happening? The sky is red. This is like a story from Stephen King! The stormy clouds are swirling in pillars of the distance. There are strange vine-like structures stretching into the sky from random points. The city skyline isn't right. Buildings are in the wrong places. I cautiously walk over the edge and look into the streets below. Chaos! People are moving strangely, anxiously, running on all fours. Feral! Hanging off street lights and wrecking cars. I smell smoke. I hear gunshots echo between buildings further downtown. I'm trapped! <laughs> I lean against the guardrail and slid down to the floor. I can't do this anymore! I feel heavy. The panic is fading and is soon replaced by apathy. I lay there for a while. I stare. I must have blacked out again. It's the same place, too. Look at that! I'm still here. <laughs> I sigh and curled up into a ball. Helpless. I feel freaking helpless. It feels like that there was a nuke that happened and everything is in chaos. It's a god-awful feeling knowing you can't do anything. I can't help but feel I'm being toyed with again and again. Is this my punishment? For what? Wanting to irk myself? Would that have satisfied you? What are you, why are you shedding innocent blood just to freak with me? Whatever, whoever is doing this to me must be enjoying themselves. Virgil, that freaking lunatic. Just like me to get suckered in by a pretty face. You think I'm pretty? My whole body shudders from the vibrations of a booming voice coming from above. I feel my brain rattling in my skull. My teeth feel like they're about to shake loose and I clench my jaw. I peek out over my shoulder, just enough to see two massive yellow orbs in the sky, 
staring down at me like searchlights. It blinks. Oh, God. That's it. I'm over my limit. My brain is going to pop. I'm going. I'm gonna faint. Goodbye, cruel world. Something is leaking out my ears. And my tongue feels swollen. I think I'm sinking into the floor. The... Uh. It's morning. It, it's, it's, it's morning. I'm laying in a soft bed. The window is slightly open and the curtains slow, slowly ebb and flow. What? Sunlight dances across the ceiling. I hear the noises of morning traffic. I hear soft snoring. Mark is here. Of course. Uh, it was just a nightmare. Of course it is. It was just a nightmare, apparently. But what? 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 <laughs> I'm here with Mark. I'm safe. He's safe. Nothing bad is going to happen. Maybe you shouldn't have jinxed it. <laughs> ah! Yep! You should have jinxed it! <laughs> I turn over and look at the bloody hole where Mark's face should be. Tricking me to scream and push myself out, the, out of the bed. No! God damn it! I tried so hard not to see it. I pulled down some of the sheets and burned my face in them. Go away! Go away! Gray? Oh, oh, oh Mark looks good. <laughs> Gray? Is that you? He pokes his head over the edge and looks down at me. He has a face again. Oh, thank God. Is everything all right? I heard a scream. Y y oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, nipples! <laughs> nipples! <laughs> nipples! <laughs> you, 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 you're okay! Of course I'm okay. I'm asking about you. I, I, I... Uh, oh, he's... Is he tearing up? Oh, gosh. I... Uh, right. All right. Uh, sorry. I wipe away the tears and snot and sit on the bed. Mark's rubbing my back and making shushing sounds to calm me down. I ask how I got into this bed, into his bed. And he says I was uncomfortable on the couch and crawled in here at some point during the night. I don't know how plausible that is, but I'm just glad to be here next next time again. Now, 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 what happened? Bad dream. That's oversimplifying things, but I nod. I'm just glad you're okay. I was really scared. I I was all alone. Hey, I'm not going anywhere, buddy. I promise. 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 Ah! <laughs> he sounds like a kid. <laughs> Pinky swear. Cross my heart and all the rest. <laughs> we interlock pinkies and choke out the giggle. He's such a kid! I feel like I'm being baby babied, but I don't mind it. I panic easily and that was one of the worst nightmares of my life. I swear if anything happens to this man, I'll hunt Virgil down and rip his goddamn head off! Wherever you are, if you're still out there, consider this a challenge. No! Oh, it hurts! <laughs> Why would you to be continued? It's getting good! Oh, I like it! I love it so much! I love it! I love this so much. I want to play more of it. I like the everything. I love the art. I love where this is going. I love everything about this. I want more. I want to play more of this. I want more. <laughs> so that's Boros, everybody. Woo! What a wonderful game. <laughs> Ooh, that was wow! What a presentation! I love it. That's that's what I want from a one from a very wordy game. At least entertain me. That's Boros. I love it. I love the presentation. I love that it's scaring me. I love that I, I'm in constant danger. I I love it that I one. I love that I feel like I'm. I am in a horror house. I love it. I, I, I love it. I love this game. I, I love it. I want more. Okay, then I'll see you guys next week 
for more videos like this. <laughs> so, with that being said, thank you everybody for watching. My name's Yuki Cookie, signing off saying, have a great day. <laughs> and never, ever go to a bar called Bar.